guys, and welcome to a very special video. In case you didn't know, tomorrow, February 27th, 2016, is Pokemon's 20th anniversary, which is absolutely amazing. Because Pokemon and I have been, well, friends for life. I was also born in 1996, and I started playing Pokemon as my very first game. Most of that stuff is up on my blog, so you guys can read all about my very first experiences in the games, uh, and how Pokemon later went on to help me make friends, and make experiences, and eventually lead to making this YouTube channel and my blog, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you all for being here. Now, what am I doing? Well, if you read the title of this video, I'm making a top 10 list, which I have never done on camera. All of my top 10 lists, including top 10 Gen 1 and Gen 2 Pokemon, as well as Ice types, and I think either Ghost or Dark types, I think Ghost types, those are all up on my blog as written posts. But I decided for Pokemon's very special 20th, I wanted to do something a little different. So, we're going to count down my top 10 Pokemon memories. These aren't going to be in order of impact so much as order of chronology. So we're going to start with Gen 1 and go all the way down. Here we go. Number 1. Gen 1, Pokemon Yellow. Pokemon Yellow was not actually my first foray into Pokemon games. It actually got to me around Pokemon Emerald or Leaf Green when I found it cheap on the internet. Purchased it up and played it right away. So I'd already played a little bit of Gen 1. So what special memories does this game have for me? Well, I booted the game up and instantly fell in love with my very own Pikachu. Anyone who's ever played Pokemon Yellow probably knows that feeling where you turned around every five seconds to say, what was Pikachu thinking? What was Pikachu feeling? And it really made you feel connected to the anime. As a kid, I watched the Pokemon anime all the time. Before going to bed, writing marathons with Yu-Gi-Oh, it was my favorite show and I'll admit, first few seasons are still one of my favorite shows. It was absolutely awesome, and I always loved Ash's Pikachu and Misty's Togepi and Brock's Vulpix, Pokemon that they let out. And Pokemon Yellow captured that. You had your very own Pikachu following you. You'll see that this is a trend that I really like in the Pokemon games, when you get to feel close to your Pokemon. And I did. Every couple seconds I would turn around and see what is Pikachu thinking? What is Pikachu feeling? And it shows you with little faces everywhere. If he was happy or angry, and he started out hating you. Straight up hatred. So it was great to get him to be our friend. And friendship became a very important part of Generation 2 and Generation 6. Number 2, Gen 2, Pokemon Crystal. Pokemon Crystal was my first ever video game, let alone Pokemon game. It has all of my gaming firsts, really. First game, first experiences, first capturing of Pokemons. Now, whereas most people's first Pokemon debate was Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur, I had Cyndaquil, Chikorita, or Totodile. And I picked little Cyndaquil. While that's a huge part of my life, the biggest part of that game was actually the Lake of Rage Gyarados. For some reason, in my mind, this Lake of Rage, a terrifying, scary big name with a big red water dragon, was huge. It had build-up. It was a place you had to go. It felt like catching my first legendary because it was built up. Everyone knew this red Gyarados. Plus, sadly, it's the only shiny I've ever caught. But I remember my first experiences, I got sailing. I swung right up to that Gyarados, this massive red dragon staring over me with his gaping maw. But in actuality, it looked more, more like this. But you know, even looking at the sprites, that overworld sprite, which, <laughs> overworld sprites. Even looking at that, I can still see that childhood wonder that I used to have every time. I see it in three dimensions about to engulf me, and then I catch it. And sadly, Pokemon Crystal's battery has run dry. So my original friend, he's not with us anymore. 
but his memory lives on in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which we will get to later. Number 3, Generation 3, Pokemon Emerald. As you probably know by now, Gen 3 is my favorite of all Pokemon generations. And I think the best game in that generation is Emerald. Emerald is probably one of my favorite video games of all time, so it was really hard for me to pick. Now, Emerald was weird. That's when I really started getting Pokemon merchandise, like this little Swallow. I love this little guy. And more than that, I loved it in the games. I don't know why, but Swallow is probably my favorite bird Pokemon. And its design is pretty simple, but it's cool. And what better way to exemplify the coolness of a Swallow than to win every single coolness competition with yours. When I played Generation 3, the contest blew me out of the water. It was my favorite part of the game. I constantly went to the one town that had it in the Pokemon Emerald and sat there, made Pokeblocks, and competed in the contest. My favorite thing to do was enter my Swellow into the coolness contest. I don't know what happened to that Swellow. I think she was traded away. But she lives on as Tanya in my newest incarnation of the game, Omega Sapphire. But we'll get to that later. But every single ribbon belongs to my Swellow. So cool. Number four, Generation 1 Remakes, Leaf Green. Leaf Green has been a bit of a fiasco, and I think I've already written about it on my blog somewhere. How I lost it, got fire red, lost it, got a new leaf green, found the old leaf green. It was a fiasco. But I do have memories. This was my first ever experience in Kanto, which is where most people started off. I have to say that the strongest memory, though, was entering Lavender Town for the first time. It sounds a bit cliche, and I'll admit, in Pokemon Yellow, it's much scarier with the purple aura and ooh, spooky music. But I was a kid still. I was in third grade, maybe? Fourth? When this game came out? And I entered Lavender Town, where people were telling me about the ghosts of Pokemon. I didn't know Pokemon could die. And especially that kid telling me about the white hand. Ugh, I hated it. I hate Lavender Town. So scary. But the Marowak. It was a touching story and it got to me as a kid. And I have to say, it was very impactful. Well done, Generation 1 remakes. Maybe less scary in looks, but you keep the heart. The heart of the game. Number 5, Generation 4, Diamond and Platinum. Now, this was the first ever generation where I got two games in it. I got Diamond, and then when Platinum came out, I pre-ordered it and got myself this lovely Giratina. So scary. Now, these games actually have a memory of tragedy for me. I had the game, I had Dialga, Emporion, and Lucario, and then I was a fool and lent the game to my friend, whose little brother got a hold of it and traded them away on the global trading station. Luckily, they live on in Pokemon Battle Revolution for the Wii, which is great. But I do have good memories of this game too, especially memories of playing underground in the tunnels. Now, I loved the base building in Pokemon Emerald, but I always wanted to share it. What's a better way than to have the flag stealing mechanic that we see in Diamond and Pearl. I had a friend named Georgia who I've already mentioned on my blog many times. We were in acting classes together, and before our class started, we would sit down and fight each other, trying to steal each other's flags before our class began. See how many you could get before the other person. We would lay out traps everywhere. We would show off our bases being like, you like my new mat? It's pretty sexy, right? Oh, my bed? Oh, it's not. Nice. No, this is just a little something I found. It was awesome. And it's, I kind of wish it was still in the new games. I understand that every generation has to have its own special gimmicks, but that's one that I honestly miss. I, I actually opened up my game to see, uh, you know, just a check-in. I have basically an entire box of Cranidos. Craniados? I, I was in the underground a lot. Hot. As a platinum, I really liked the dark world. 
I remember stepping foot in it for the first time, and my I literally said, whoa. Because everything like twists and it's cool. It's so cool. Number six, Generation 2 remakes Heart Gold. Now, as we all know, Crystal was my first ever game. Generation 2 is, I mean, it's not my favorite, but it was my first. So getting the remakes was absolutely amazing. And what did the remakes come with? My favorite feature of all time. All of my favorite memories. You step in, and your little buddies are all walking behind you. They, every single Pokemon, even Ho-Oh. I caught Ho-Oh, and I have that big, giant, mystical bird walking behind me. Why? Why does that not appear in any other game? I understand technical limitations, but if Pokemon, if Pokemon Yellow could do it on the Game Boy, couldn't we just see a little more of it? A little more. I loved it. And it really felt like I was taking a walk with my Pokemon. And I would always put, well, I hate to say it, but my favorite, usually my starter in my first spot, so it felt like I was going on a little walk. Come on, number one, let's go. Number seven, Generation 5, Black and White 2. Now, Generation 5 was a huge dividing point for me. I didn't like the Pokemon. I thought that they were ugly or unoriginal, and the starters were not my favorite by any stretch of the imagination. I felt maybe a little run out on Pokemon. I hear that happens to everyone. Don't worry, I got back. I eventually decided, huh, I'll, g I'll give it a shot. And when I actually played Black, I got to meet N, my favorite character, my favorite experience. I have always, always, always wanted a Pokemon RPG kind of thing where you get to romance someone. The very handsome N. Sure, didn't actually turn out to be a romance, but it felt like it. Felt like it. Which is all that really matters, right? It's in the heart. But it was so cool. N was an amazing character, and the games were talking about things that people talk about in real life. Is Pokemon about animal abuse, or is it about making friendships? And it's, it's an important question to ask when you're marketing a game to kids. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. And in White 2, movies. I made so many movies. So many. That's what I would do in real life. I remember walking into that town and being like, there's a movie studio? Can I, can I go there? Can, can I? With my Pokemon? My word. It was so cool! And I went and I made almost every single movie. It was amazing. I loved it. So good. And along with the, uh, the mall. It really felt interconnected when you would see a random little person walk through your mall and you're like, Hey, hey, are you a real person? And they'd be like, yeah, I'm Bill from Global Trade System. I'm meeting people. I have friends. Number eight, Generation Six, Pokemon X. As you probably know, X and Y are my least favorite Pokemon games. But that doesn't mean that they don't have anything that really makes me happy. Mainly, Pokemon and me. It was for the first ever time that I got to pet an Umbreon in-game. As you all should know by now, Umbreon is my favorite Pokemon and, well, obviously I really want Pokemon to be interconnected, human and Pokemon interactivity. And that's what I got. Pokemon and me, I played it with all of my Pokemon. My favorite, what I did, so I was very careful with one Eevee I named Z. I took care of it trained him only at night, made sure he turned into an Umbreon. I was so careful not to let him evolve into a Sylveon. Not that I have anything wrong with it, but I, I really, I needed one. And then I put him into Pokemon and me, and I finally got to give him the love that he deserved from the beginning. It was absolutely amazing, and I'm sure everyone remembers a specific Pokemon that they put in Pokemon and me. And I'm glad that that carried over to the remakes of uh, Gen 3, because I have another one. And I want to give it the love, too. Number 9, Generation 3 Remakes, Omega Sapphire. Now, I already said that Emerald is my favorite, but I do like the remakes in some capacities. 
My favorite thing about this is truly just the nostalgia. I remembered Pokemon Emerald in very vivid ways. I remember stepping into Fort Tree City, going to the contests, and I get to redo that. I made a Tanya, the same as before. I've put her in all the coolness contests and tried to make her very similar. I picked a different starter, sure, but it's the same game. It's amazing. And I get to be back with all of my favorites and all of my favorite locations, and I get to fly over them. My favorite memory, though, has to be winning those contests again. It felt just like 10 years ago, when I was a little kid sitting there in the big gym for sports camp. And finally, number 10, spin-offs, Pokemon Coliseum. Now, there are a lot of Pokemon spin-offs, and I've played most of them, excluding like the Pokemon TCG game and a few others. But my favorite is Pokemon Coliseum. Why? Because you have an Umbreon that rides in your sidecar. I have been trying to pinpoint the exact moment that I fell in love with Umbreon and Espeon. I always thought that they were cool, but when did I really zero in on Umbreon? That, that moment, that opening cutscene. You blow up this place and who's waiting for you? Little Umbreon and Espeon sitting in your sidecar. They are with you the whole game. I didn't use other Pokemon. I used my Umbreon and my Espeon. The best. Around. It's absolutely awesome to see that this little guy became a close friend. All through a game that was pretty much what I wanted. Pokemon. On a console. On my TV. As an RPG. Not just Battle Revolution. Where it's the same as just battles. I wanted a story, and I got one. I also really like Mirror B. Look at those hips. So, that's it, you guys. Those are my top 10 memories, but they're not by any means my only memories. Pokemon has been with me for probably 17 years, and that's extremely special for me. And I'm very happy that they've made it this far. No matter what, can you believe that the Gen 2 games were going to be the last ones? Imagine all the kids who wouldn't know about Pokemon like, like Rayquaza, or Mana, or Flygon, or Fennekin, or Mega Charizard. They wouldn't know. They wouldn't exist. There'd be so many kids that never got to experience Pokemon. And I'm really happy that I was one of the people that did. Pokemon has been an integral part of not just my life, but obviously thousands, millions of people's. So thank you Pokemon, thank you Game Freak, thank you Nintendo, thank you Internet for giving me a chance to say that to them. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I will link you to the Bird Keeper Toby tag as well as the Tomashi Hiroka tag that I've already done before about Pokemon, where I talk more about my history with the games. Also down below, there should be a link to a Pokemon Master Post, or at least to my blog where you can find all of my Pokemon memories. I hope you guys have had a great time with me, because I've had a great time with you. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'm making a lot more videos. They are getting ready to come out very, very soon. There should be, I think, four more after this video that I should be able to get up by the end of March, which is amazing. Also, follow me on Twitter, Twitch, when I live stream, and all that good stuff. All the links are in the description. Have a lovely day, everyone. And remember, be the very best, like no one ever was. Hello everybody, Leia here, and it's time for another round of Pokemon Tag. This time, we are going to... Hello everybody, it's Galen here, and I have a different kind of video for you today. I... and competed in the... and competed in the...